Hello, Stu. How was your weekend? Wonderful. How about yours? Oh, my. It, mine? Yeah, was it, it was great. Oof, it was great. Yeah. I heard, uh, you know, you said uh, you've watched a couple of Nazi propaganda films this weekend. <laughs> yeah, I so I thought it went pretty well. <laughs> yes, it did. I, I, I'm doing research on some stuff. So I watched two Goebbels films this weekend. That When I say to you a Nazi propaganda film, do you expect them to be good or eye roll? Many of them were eye roll, right. especially the early ones. Okay, the two that were really, really powerful were were actually, if you put yourself in the mindset of the Germans at the time, they are effective, really, really effective. Uh, one was on the Jews, and it was a movie that was banned right after the war, and they wanted everything destroyed, the Germans did, but East Germany belonged to the Russians, so the Russians saved it. And now we have a copy of it, um, but it was one that was written and edited by Goebbels himself. It's quite amazing how they just made you hate the Jew. And it was, if, if you're in their mindset, if you had been primed for years, when that came out, it was, yes, okay. Well, that's why I guess so many of them went along with it, right? The other one I watched was I Accuse. This one could be redone in America today. And nobody would speak out against it. And it's about assisted suicide. But it takes on the children, you know, Stu, the handicapped children, the ones who don't have a life worth living. Oh, no. And uh, it makes a very effective, heartfelt case. And as I want to show on TV tonight, the interesting thing was while they're deliberating this professor who killed his wife and the doctor who was just saving babies, and he wouldn't kill the babies. He had a change of heart because then he saw what he was doing to these babies. They were living these horrible lives. And uh, so he, the, the professor decides to kill his wife because she has MS, and we all know that you don't live with MS and have any quality of life whatsoever. So he killed her, and they're in the deliberation. The jury is deliberating. They're sitting there talking about it. And they're going back and forth on whether or not, and somebody actually says, now this is a German propaganda film. And if you've been listening and watching over the last couple of weeks, this will run, your, your, your blood will go cold with ice water. It actually stands up and says, yes, I know, I know it's life, but something has to be done. <laughs> something oh. always has to be done. It always, always does. And it never works out for the rights of the people. No. No, it no, doesn't. It never does. What a surprise. And, you know, and this, you went back to, you did a bunch of this on TV last week, seeing how each one of our 10 rights in the Bill of Rights have been, you know, mowed over. Mowed over, or at least pushed back against. And now we're seeing it. I guess this is the motivation for you watching several Nazi propaganda films this weekend was this op ed in the Washington Post talking about what a brave decision it is to abort your child if you know it has Down syndrome. Do you remember, Stu, when we first started working together in the 90s, I, I kept talking about Peter Singer because he was one of the guys that I put together of, you know, the the council of a serial killer. You know, I, I, I went out and I, I don't remember who I who balanced him. It may have been Billy Graham and Peter Singer. Right. And Peter Singer is a chair of ethics at Pr Princeton, right? Yeah. And a guy who has some uh, interesting thoughts on life. <laughs> yeah, he thinks you say. can kill your children. He said you, you you can kill your children up until two, and then he apologized for that and said, I didn't mean to say that you had to stop at two. I mean, really, there's no time limit. There's no time limit. You can kill your children at and, any time. And the thought was consciousness, right? Was yeah, it the, initial... it, the minute that they realize that there is a tomorrow, that's when they become human. Right, not at birth. Not at birth. Trying to extend that mm -hmm. out a little bit. And, yeah. and we talked about how, how horrifying that was. And I remember at the time thinking, it's this intellectual guy at Princeton. It's obviously horrifying. But, you know, these crazy professors come out and say things sometimes. And this is not how the American people feel. You know, here we are 15 years later. And this is, because, this is being called this weekend Brave. Ready? A new anti-abortion, a new push in anti-abortion circles 
to pass laws aimed at barring women from terminating their pregnancies after the fetus has been determined to have Down syndrome. Stop using the word fetus. It's a baby, and you know it. These laws are unconstitutional, unenforceable, and wrong. This is a difficult subject to discuss because there are so many parents who have and cherish a child with Down syndrome. Many people with Down syndrome live happy and fulfilled lives. The new Gerber baby with Down syndrome is awfully cute. I have two children. I was old enough when I became pregnant that it made sense to do the testing for Down syndrome. Back then, amniocentesis uh, performed after 15 weeks. Now, we sample to provide a conclusive determination as early as nine weeks. And I can say without hesitation, tragic as it would have been to feel and ghastly as a second trimester abortion would have been, I would have terminated those pregnancies had testing come back uh, positive. I would have grieved my loss, and then I would have moved on. What bravery. I'm not alone. More than two-thirds of American women choose abortion in such, such circumstances. Isn't that the point? Or at least the inherent point? Prenatal t- testing in the first place? No. No it's, no, it's not. No, it's to prepare you. If you believe that abortion is equivalent to murder, the taking of human life, then of course you'd make a different choice. But that's not my belief. And the Supreme Court has affirmed my freedom. Yeah, they also they also affirmed Jim Crow laws. Okay, so <laughs> they affirmed all sorts of crap. They call, they've done all kinds of crap. I respect and I admire families that knowingly welcome a baby with Down syndrome into their lives. Why would you admire them? Certainly to be a parent, to take risks that accompany parenting, to love your child for who she is, not what you want her to be. Hmm. But accepting that the essential truth is different from compelling women to give birth to a child whose intellectual capacity will be impaired, whose life choices will be limited, whose health may be compromised. Most children with Down syndrome have mild to moderate cognitive impairment, meaning the IQ between 55 and 70 or 35 and 55 for moderate. This means limited capacity for independent living and financial security. Down syndrome is life altering for the entire family. And I'm going to be blunt here. That's not the child I wanted. That was not the choice I would have made. You can call me selfish or worse, but I'm in good company. Yes, I actually did some research. She's in good company. <laughs> There's a couple of movies you watched this all weekend. All the Nazis yeah. agreed with you. An entire nation. All, yep. The, mm-hmm. all the, no, actually, no, Stu. <laughs> That's right. There's... No, the Nazis mm-hmm. passed a law in 1939 that you could kill these lives that aren't worth living. You could kill these children with, they started really with the Down syndrome babies. Those were prime targets. Wait, wait, who did they start with again? Uh, Down, Down syndrome babies. Well, they actually started with Baby Nower, but Down syndrome was the first because they were incurable. How brave. Very brave of the, of Nazis. the Nazis. Wow. And you know what's really interesting? Mm-hmm. After parents started figuring out that the Nazis were not taking care of their children, but gassing them in hospitals... By 1941, the German, listen to this, by 1941, the German people stood up against the elites, the doctors, the hospitals, and the nurses, and said, you can't kill children with uh, disabilities and Down syndrome. So, no, (laughs) she actually doesn't have... Uh, a lot of people uh, agree with her. She does have the Nazis, but not the German people of 1941. Wow. Well, that is not very brave of the German people of 1941. <laughs> I'll tell you that. You're right. That's not brave. <sighs> Laws are inconsistent with Roe versus Wade, blah, blah, blah. Think about it. Can it be that a woman have more constitutional freedom to choose to terminate their pregnant pregnancies on a whim? Then for the reason of the baby that has Down syndrome and to the question of enforceability, who is going to police this decision making? Doctors are now supposed to turn in their patients, patients who they owe confidentiality for making a decision of which the state disapproves. Yes, there is creepy eugenic aspects of the new technology. (laughs) Yes, yes, there really is. Yes, yes. And you know what? You know what else? You know what's really creepy is the Germans, the Nazis, okay? The Nazis were only doing it because, quite honestly, most of the doctors were creepy freaks that had a death fetish. But that doesn't excuse the nurses and the other doctors that went along. The other doctors that went along were actually thinking that they were doing the right thing for the Volk, for the people. 
They were doing something because they were going to, through the creepy eugenics, create the master race and eliminate all suffering. That's what they thought. By eliminating them now, in a couple of decades, we'll have nobody with any disabilities and we'll have a master race and everything will be great. They, at least in their sick, twisted, dark, evil way, thought they were doing something good. Yours is, I just don't want that baby. Oh my gosh. Congratulations, America. We have passed the darkness. Gee, who said this? Who, I know there was somebody about five years ago that said, if we go dark, we'll go darker than the Nazis. I can't remember. He was probably crazy. And he certainly wouldn't have approved of the New York Times starting a new podcast called The Caliphate. But anyway, somebody said that we will pass the Nazis in darkness. Congratulations, gang. We are on that.